Black Sparks Fire and Bailing Wire. Today I'm going to work on getting the radiator reinstalled on the tractor. And if time permits, I'm going to get started on the wiring on it. Stick around and get it put together. Got the radiator shell all painted up. I'll lay it down flat here. Get the radiator installed in it. And the hard part's getting the neck up through that hole and then getting it shifted down in there. Take some jiggling around, but I got it, so it's ready to go on now. There's two bolts go up from underneath in the frame rail. So get the creeper under there. Okay, now that the radiator's mounted up before I put the alternator on. Try and get the radiator hose in there. I'm not going to be able to get a camera angle on this because I'm going to have to stand right in the way of the camera to put it on there. And I'm sure it's not going to be fun anyway. So I'll get that on off camera quick. Okay, I got the bottom hose in there. It wasn't a lot of fun, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be either. I'll try and get the top one on. Okay, both hoses are on, ready for an alternator. Yeah, you know, my radiator bracket's fabbed up. This is the final product I came up with. So we get that bolted on. Yeah, I'll get those bolts tightened down, we'll be ready for the alternator. Okay, now that the bracket's on, go ahead and get the alternator in there. This is what I wound up with for a tensioning bracket for the alternator. Just took a piece of 3 quarter inch by 3 sixteenths thick flat stock and got it bent to where I needed. Got a slot milled in it for the adjustment. It'll bolt on just like that. Okay, the alternator is installed. Belt's tensioned. Got plenty of room for the throttle linkage to clear. Everything's going to work. With the exception of that Denso style alternator looking out of place on a 64 year old tractor, pretty well looks like factory install. Pretty happy with that. Now we're on to the wiring. Well, they said it was going to happen today about the time the sun come up and it did. It's snowing again. We got a little over an inch yesterday but it was gone by lunchtime. We're supposed to get an inch again today. Hopefully it'll be gone by tonight. I already have the distributor sitting in here. Start by popping the cap, rotor and dust cover off. This gasket needs to go on here, so I'll throw that in right now. I'm going to time it so the rotor is pointing out number one cylinder. I've already got it on top dead center on the compression stroke. So I'm going to get the rotor pointed towards number one. And then that will wind up being my number one cylinder in the firing order. I'll just lightly clamp it down for now.
Okay, now next step is going to be to get this points of condenser out of here. Remove this wiper first. That won't be used anymore. All that is a little spot you could drip oil in there. There's a felt. It just wiped oil on the cam for the points. That is no longer needed. Already got these wires loose. So get the condenser out of there. and the points. I can remove this isolator stud because that won't be used anymore either. I had already cleaned this up so I'm ready to Put the protronics in there. This is designed to mount right on the plate. And it uses the stud for the points as a guide to line it up. Just stick that in there. And then the screw that originally held the points in place is what holds it down. Next is a sleeve that's got the magnets in it for the pickup coil. And it's designed to fit over the cam. So you just place that on there. Turn it till you feel it line up, press it down into place. I'll put the wiring through the supplied grommet that comes with the kit. And that'll go out through where that original isolator stud was. Put it roughly where it needs to be. That's pretty much it for the distributor part. Go ahead and replace the dust cap. Rotor. That's real close to number one. I'm sure I'm going to have to fine tune it. Should be enough to get it started. Now these wires just get hooked to the negative and positive of the coil. The positive will run back to the ignition switch. I'm not going to use these supplied stab-on connectors that Come with the coil. This is a Protronics flamethrower coil too that I bought. It's designed to work with the system. This kit comes with these crimp on connectors, but I don't really care for these things, so I'm not going to use them. Not crimp on anyway. I will crimp, I'm going to get rid of the insulator part. Put shrink tube on, crimp them on, solder them, and shrink the tube on. Make a nice watertight connection. Okay, I got two short pieces of shrink tube I'll slip on there. The positive of the coil is back here. Flip that 
wire, get it stripped. There's one terminal crept on. Slide the shrink tube down. Take the heat gun and shrink them on there. Here's the connections made. It's probably overkill for this because this is never going to sit out in the rain or definitely never going to see a salty wintertime road. But that's the best connection you can make. It's waterproof, last a lifetime. Now all I need is a 12 volt wire from the ignition switch up to the positive side of the coil. And this will be complete. Pretty simple process really. I've never used one of these Pertronix electronic conversions, but everybody says they're the best thing they ever did. So hopefully I agree with them. I'll find out. I'm going to start assembling the dash, such as it is. All it is is a amp gauge, which I'm doing away with that, putting straight bolt gauge in. Light switch, and the on off switch for the ignition. Bought a key switch for this, and it was way too big to fit in here. So I'm going to go back to what it had, which was just a plain old toggle switch. Which is really all that it needs anyway. That light switch I bought, I don't need the three position one anymore. Since I converted to 12 volt, so I just bought a simple on off switch and get that stuck in there. Last, the volt gauge can go in. No people, a lot of people aren't going to like this, but. Again, the amateur's old school technology. And from what I read, the reproduction ones that go on here that have the Alice Chalmers name in it, I said they're not the right script for the Alice Chalmers name. And this didn't get good reviews in general. So I'm putting a standard volt gauge in. That's what it is. The on off, headlights, bolt gauge. That's it. Okay, starting at the back, have the grommet in the fender. Feed that wire through. channel in this fender brace that this wire runs through. This is just a tail light that comes on with the light switch. There's no brake switch or nothing for it. Okay, I'm starting to lay out the wiring harness. I got this piece of wire measured out and cut to go up to the coil. I also have this wire marked 
bought a roll of this webbing that protects wiring. I'll cut a piece of that to go on there. I also shrink that on. Now the ends fray when you cut it, so I also put a small piece of shrink tube on that too. Now I have a nice protected wire to run up to the coil. Okay, we have the wire routed to the one wire for the alternator. That's a 10 gauge. This is a 35 amp alternator. On this side we have the single 16 routed around through the little clip down here up to the positive side of the coil where the red wire from the protronics goes. I'll get a nut and a screw to put these headlight wires together. And then I'll just tape those up with some rubber insulating tape. And then the headlights will be done too. Oh, I'm talking about rubber tape for those connectors. I'm not talking about the standard black electrical tape. This stuff, this roll is about empty, but this is a rubber tape. It actually stretches out. It's not even sticky. You stretch it out, you wrap it around your connection, and it will shrink back on itself and make it waterproof. This is quite a bit thicker than regular electrical tape, too. This is a lot better insulation. A lot better sealing. Okay, finally got this together. So we got a hot and a ground going to come in off the battery. We got a 12 volt wire pigtailed off of that soldered and heat shrink that goes to the toggle switch. And the toggle switch will turn on the voltmeter and provide power to the headlight switch. And the toggle switch will also run out to the ignition, obviously, to provide power to the coil. Pretty simple, but it's kind of hard getting all that packed in that little box. Okay, the dash is all assembled. Ignition on. Bolt gauge comes up. Headlights on. Got tail light, headlights. Little light, the bolt gauge lights up. Test light here. Ignition on. So that's going to work like it's supposed to. Well, I need to get some proper battery cables, some spark plugs, plug wires. The wiring will be complete on here. I'm really running out of excuses on why this thing isn't running. We get that wiring finished up. We got to do the choke linkage yet, carburetor linkage, a couple of other odds and ends. But by Friday, I'm thinking this thing should be running. Today's Tuesday, so you won't see it in this week's video. But next week, I think you'll finally see this thing run. Fingers crossed. Sure hoping so. It's been a long road. But anyway, the time is near. So, stay tuned. It's going to happen in the next video, I think.